so far we saw our singular value decomposition on this small users to movies um, example, where what we saw was basically we took this original matrix and where we were able to represent it as a product of three matrices. And there we talked about the sci-fi concept, the uh, Romans concept, and then there was this also the third column that we kind of had very low strength, right? The, the third concept that had very small strength uh, that we kind of brushed uh, under the rug and didn't really talk about. So what I want to do now is actually talk about how do we do the dimensionality reduction. In a sense, how do we discover that our movie data really had only two real kind of strong concept and the, th the, th the last third concept was more like noise and it was okay to, to, to kind of uh, remove it from our analysis and discussion. So the idea is how do we, what is SVD really doing and how do we think about it in terms of dimensionality reduction? And what SVD is really trying to do, it basically in some sense it gives us the best axis to project on. So what do we mean by this is that the, the best means that the sum of the squared projection errors is minimized. Okay, so in some sense we want, we want a small set of axes such that we, if we represent our data in terms of that, of that axis, uh, we get the minimum reconstruction error. And the simple example how to see this would be in, in this two dimensional example, where imagine every different axis is a separate movie and we have users uh, ranking movies. And every point is now uh, a user and the x position of this point is how much they, they rated use, uh, movie one, and the y position is how much they rated movie two. And as, assume that our data lies in this kind of, in this kind of shape. So then if we think of, of it and say, okay, we are only given one coordinate to be able to represent this data. So not two coordinates, but I only give you one coordinate. What is the best axis along which you want to represent this data? So for example, in this case, this would be the best axis, and now every data point we can represent as a single number, which is simply the position or the projection of a given data point on, on this line. So for example, the, the, the data point that I'm just drawing, the, the red data point here, would project to this line, um, to this particular location. And now my goal is that when I now represent these two dimensional points simply by, the, by their position on, along my red line, the sum of the squared errors um, of their locations, so basically the, dis the distance between its true position and the, and the position uh, among the line, uh, should be minimal. And this is exactly what SVD does. So what SVD does is finds the best vectors or axes on which to project the data such that the reconstruction error is minimized. So let me give you an example of what do I mean by this. And now for example also the question is given this, this two dimensional data, how do I discover the best, the best axis on which to project? And how do I really do dimensionality reduction? How do I discover the position of the point uh, on this given line? So the idea is the following. We are given our matrix A, and uh, we want to, we represent it as a product of three matrices, U sigma and V transpose, where we think of V as a movie to concept matrix and U as a uh, user to concept uh, matrix. So what this means Im immediately that we see that V is a movie to concept matrix, which means that for example, if you want to ask what is this vector V1 along which it is the best to represent the data, that is simply the first row of our matrix um, V transposed, right? So this is exactly the, the vector that represents um, the, 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 the axis of the highest variation. So I, I have still my, our old example of uh, users to movies represented um, in the SVD of this thing. And now the question is how do we do dimensionality reduction? So for example, the way we do dimensionality reduction is that we can think of the whole system, the, the following that our um, first right singular vector gives us the location, the axis on which we want to project. And then the, the corresponding singular value tells us the variance along that given dimension or the spread of the values along that given dimension. So in our two dimensional case here, the, va the values are really spread around the first uh, singular vector. They are spread around a bit the second singular vector a bit less, and they are not really spread around uh, the third singular vector. So the strength or the impor importance of that vector is very small. So um, now what we can think of, we can think of the locations the following. So, so far I talked to you what defines the axis. Now the next question is what defines the positions or coordinates of the points in this new, new space. And the way we can 
think of that is that we simply take the matrix U and multiply it with, sig with sigma, right? And this gives us the coordinates of the points in, on this projection axis, right? So basically, how do they map down to our lines, right? So for example, if I compute, given my matrix A, I compute the product of uh, U times sigma, um, here, is the, here is now the position of every, of every user in this uh, new, new space where, for example, the first vector simply tells us what is the location of every user along, along the first uh, right singular vector. And for example, here you see that the values vary quite a lot along the first one. They value quite a lot along the second one, right? The range is very high. But for example, the third one, everything is uh, kind of around zero or the, the variation on the, along the third column is much smaller, which is why the, the third um, uh, concept had a, had a very small uh, weight. So now, given that we have our matrix A and again the um, singular value decomposition of it, the question is how do we really do dimensionality reduction, right? So, so far I just showed you how we can represent the original data points in this new, uh, in this new projected space. But the question is how do we really do dimensionality reduction? And that turns out to be very simple. All basically we need to do is we need to go and set a given set of uh, singular values to zero. And basically we take the smallest, if we want to pres preserve k dimensions, then basically we take r minus k sing smallest singular values and set them to zero. So for example, in our case here, if we want to do dimensionality reduction from this three-dimensional space to a two-dimensional space, all we need to do is take this small, the small singular value, set it to zero, which in some sense means that now we also take the third uh, column of u and the third row of v transpose and set them to zero so the way we can do dimensionality reduction is to now take uh, u, the new sigma, and the new v transpose, where we took uh, the last singular value, the last singular vector, and the last right singular vector, we set all of those to zero. So if we would now, for example, go and take, take the, the three new matrices that, that are now smaller, right? They only have two columns um, and two rows, and multiply this thing together, uh, here's the matrix we would obtain, right? So here's our uh, uh, original matrix A. Here's our new matrix A, call it uh, A prime, or let's give it a name B. And what you notice is that A and B are very similar to each other. So what do I mean by similar to each other is that if I take a given element, for example, this number five here, and I compare it to this value here, to the same axis in uh, to the same cell in uh, matrix B, we see that the difference is very small. Right? Or for example, I can take this zero here, correspond it, um, uh, compare it to the corresponding element in B, and again, I see the difference is very small. Right? So what we basically did is we took, uh, in the previous slide, we took our original matrix A, represented it, did SVD, and we were able now to exactly reconstruct it. Now we actually took, um, uh, removed a few col uh, last column from u and the last column from v, and we removed the uh, singular value. Um, now we represented everything as a as a as a smaller set of matrices. So these matrices are now smaller. If we multiply the the three matrices uh, together now, uh, the new matrix we obtained was very similar to the original matrix A. And when I say very similar, we can quantify the similarity of two matrices using what is called the Frobenius norm. Right? And the Frobenius norm of two matrices is simply the, the sum of the differences of their entries. Right? So if I say um, I have matrix A, I have matrix B, so their distance, their Frobenius norm, is simply I take a summation over all the entries, I take the difference of the entry values, uh, sum them up, uh, square that up, uh, sum those entries together, and uh, take a square root, and that's my distance. 